Hello, everyone. We have a new format to use for the hosting platform. As you can tell, we're using Zoom webinars. I am so excited to be here to use an actual platform that hopefully won't blow up on me. All righty. So hello, everyone. My name is Mike Tarallo. Thank you for joining us on the next, uh, I guess you could say, session or in the series, Do More With Click. Uh, we've been running these now for quite a while uh, using a new platform today, Zoom webinars. So as I mentioned to those on the pre-call, uh, if we have a little hiccups, we're learning the system. So bear with us, but hopefully this will go much smoother than the last one we had. Um, with me today is Alberto Vaghi from Presales Italy. Alberto, you can unmute yourself. Uh, we are technically starting now the formal presentation. Uh, as you guys know, the Do More With Click series basically is meant to inspire you as well as educate you and you know, want you to learn how to do more with click. And today I have Alberto with me who's going to um, present custom themes with me, but also utilizing utility uh, that he developed. Alberto, if you'd like to say hello to everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Mike said, I'm Alberto. Uh, I'm uh, from Italy. I work as a solution architect in the Italian uh, Precise team. And uh, yeah, as Mike said, I'm going uh, talk to uh, talk about my uh, creation, the theme creator, and I'm going to share the little story behind this tool, and uh, we are going to see it uh, live. Perfect. Thank you, Alberto. I appreciate that. So a couple of slides. I, When I have a special guest on these sessions, um, I always go through some housekeeping slides and then I kind of do a little bit of a presentation on what you're about to see, basically set expectations, um, throw a little disclaimer in there so you understand what's going on um, with the topic at hand. And then I turn it over to the presenter. Then sometimes I do these by myself where I just take charge of the whole entire presentation. So for this one, I'm just gonna go through a couple of housekeeping slides. We've done a number of these sessions uh, over the past uh, year and a half or two years. I kind of lost track. Um, they are available in an archive. Uh, we will have a resources list available for the attendees as we start to build up um, the particular uh, topics and uh, educational materials. So you ha can watch a previous recorded session if you want to learn how to do more with Click based on the number of topics. So please uh, be aware of that. Uh, on the last Do More, I had Tomi Kamalafe with me and Barry Homsen with me uh, from Bitmetric. And we covered basically part one of custom themes. And then Barry also covered uh, his utility called sensetheme.com, basically allowing you to bring a lot, a lot more visual appeal to your ClickSense apps. Uh, and Tomi went through a number of different capabilities um, to provide that a solution to the ClickSense themes. He you know, went through those pieces. I'm gonna recap some of that today. And then Alberto is gonna basically show his tool today. Okay, on the next Do More with Click, uh, we are gonna talk about write back solutions using Click application automation. Uh, I and my team have developed a number of simple solutions and some more advanced solutions utilizing ClickSense application automation uh, to create a uh, very, um, unique and uh, capable write back solutions. And I would like you to join me uh, for that. That is July 19th and the uh, Do More With Click registration page is now live. Uh, we will share that as well uh, in the resources when available. Okay, so first things first, when we talk about themes, okay, custom themes at this moment, out of the box with Click are generated with code. Um, it's simplistic code, but it still can be quite involved depending on what it is you want to project within your ClickSense app. It's cascading style sheets um, code basically. And then there's also cascading style sheet code embedded in a JSON file, JavaScript object notation. Combination of those two files basically present you to tag your different elements and style many different elements within a ClickSense app whether it's the bar chart colors or the backgrounds or the sheets or the fonts or the sizes, numerous things could be done. So typically before uh, Barry and Alberto made these tools, it would be something that was an exercise where you would tag objects, look at objects within a development browser and basically trial and error or utilize an existing theme and then start modifying it from there. Okay, so understand out the bat, when we talk about custom themes, it's under mostly generally used with code, okay? But you don't have to be a coder, okay? There are tips and tools that are out there 
Um, there's utilities, as we've discussed already, uh, reusing the theme, inspecting existing styling, copying the code, paste in place, and importing existing and fonts that make things a lot easier. So it's not like you have to start from a blank canvas and then just start, you know, typing away, um, to, you know, JSON office, you know, <clears throat> notation or uh, CSS to do that. So you can use a baseline to get started. Okay. Now, for reference, we do have Doc. Okay, and that's at click.dev, and that will go through all of the different steps for customizing a theme. Question is, is you know, how many people actually follow Doc? I do. Usually, after I run into something, I always like to, you know, do the hello world version of something, play with an existing sample, modify it, and then if I get stuck, I go to the Doc and ask questions. But just be aware, we do have Doc available that goes into many different aspects and elements that can be styled. Okay. So helpful tools and utilities that are available. Obviously we talked about Barry's sense theme.com. Uh, the click sense theme by Alberto, he just updated the site. Um, so he is going to um, make that URL available in the chat uh, to you all in the Q and A to you all. Uh, once we, I guess, like I said, iron out this um, resources listing available for you. Um, so you could access that and use that as well. And there's other tools that help inspire. Okay. I am not such a visual designer like I can work with Click, both core competencies, data integration and data visualization and analytics. But when it comes to actually creating that art in front of me, it takes a while, right? So you want to be inspired by either color palettes or images. Um, there are going to be tools that are out there. So always make sure you use your browser web development tools to inspect elements. Add-ons such as color pickers, so you can pick the right colors that match your organization's theme and style. Uh, you can import fonts, and uh, Alberto is going to show you something awesome today that he showed me yesterday. But if you go to fonts.google.com, the fonts API, you can actually embed those fonts directly from there into our product and select them from our product's um, uh, UI panels and use them within custom themes. And then there's also third-party design tools like Canva and Adobe Express. And if you're familiar with OpenAI or ChatGPT, for example, they have tools like Dolly or um, ways of where you can say, provide me with a color palette in the form of hex code that matches a particular color. And it'll provide you with a color palette that you can cut and paste and use. So keep that in mind as well if you need inspiration for styling and making your uh, apps pop. Okay, so this is just an example of some of the tools that I mentioned, right? You have your inspector, you have color pickers, you have Google fonts, right? Adobe Express that I use or Canva. These tools are all readily available. Some come with free trials as well, so you don't always have to pay for everything. Um, but one of your friends is definitely going to be the in tool development inspector. Um, so you can see different elements you might want to style as well. Okay, elements that can be styled, pretty much almost everything that's out there. Backgrounds, titles, data colors, fonts, color palettes, color scales, access labels, positioning, and so much more. Um, the example you see here, this is a cyberpunk theme. It was developed by, uh, I forgot the pre-sale uh, architect's name. I think his first name was Jeff. I just styled it to actually use a cyberpunk background from a video game for Xbox. Um, this was using a neon theme and actually had some neon flicker to it, which are all elements supported by the font and browser. So, I call it an extreme example. This is just an example of my video game collection uh, app. It's an extreme example of what can be done, but pretty much you're dealing with the art of the possible when it comes to themes and you're really limited by your imagination. It's not a, a product or, or tool limit. Um, you just have to kind of put your mind to how you want it to be presented. Okay, so that was since theme by Bitmetric I mentioned already. And I think that was it for the slide deck. Let me see if I... I Okay, yeah, so that, that's a slide from the last se se uh, session we did. And then the, uh, the one final note, this is very important, okay? Sense Themes is very powerful. Um, I'm sorry, uh, the custom themes within ClickSense are very powerful and the capabilities to work with it are. But you need to also know that more and more and more and more styling is being developed directly into the UI. Okay, so selecting fonts and um, for different elements, right? Your subtitles, your titles, your chart elements, your data elements, um, your sizes, your colors, your weights. Okay, these are all becoming more and more readily available out of the box in the UI so you can select individual elements for all of them. Uh, background sheets, I mean, sheets and background styles for sheets and images as well. Um, different options for sol solid colors or even color changing the expression. Um, by changing the color by an expression based off of a value or something that comes back from the data. All of this is becoming more and more available into the product. 
okay? And then custom fonts can also be added. So as I mentioned, you could have an import statement in your theme to pull in a font completely external from a third party, such as Google Fonts or Google's API fonts, and it'll be shown up directly within the UI, okay? So that's something also we're exposing in the out-of-the-box uh, product. Okay, so I think that's it for my part of this. I did want to just share something quickly before turning it over to uh, Alberto. Um, just to give you a quick example of what we're dealing with, I have an app that Alberto sent me that I actually unstyled, right? I just used the default drag and drop capabilities. And this is just a simple sales analysis app performance summary. So I want to basically increase the visual appeal or maybe match my particular uh, organizational brand or theme. So in this case here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the management console and I'm gonna go to themes. Now, obviously you have to have access to the management console to do this. And I'm gonna click add and I'm gonna select the hell yeah zip file that Alberto had sent me. Thank you, Alberto. Funny name. <laughs> this is a family show. <laughs> okay, so that's been uploaded. Okay, so now this theme has been uploaded. And as I mentioned, in that zip file, we have basically the cascading style sheets and the, and the JavaScript the object notation or the JSON file, along with some descriptive Im image information uh, that just tells you what the theme is, who created it. So now I'm gonna go back to my app. I'm just gonna refresh my app. And I did wanna show you a couple other things that are possible. So Alberto took this to the next level. He not only combined his theme to style elements, but he also combined the out of the box capabilities, the styling of the individual objects. So for example, I'm gonna open up another one just to show you, right? So for example, selecting the KPI object and many of these options now in presentation now have a styling box. And he took advantage of also styling individual elements and combining it with his theme to give it a good look. So let me give you a quick example. So if I go in to the, um, expansion bar here that brings me to the UI settings, I can now select the hell yeah theme. Okay, but I want you to see what happens here. So we, cause we didn't adjust, I adjusted this just as a quick example. So this incorporates all of the different elements that he set up within the uh, custom theme creator that we just uploaded. But now if I wanted to even make some additional changes, I'm gonna go to background image of my sheet and I'm going to select my styling and I'm going to choose select an image from the media library and I'm going to choose this dashboard. I'm going to click insert. So now it gives the appearance and I'm not done with the font colors yet. It, now it gives the appearance of a control panel. So this background image actually has a nice beveled shadow. I have my control buttons here, right? So you start seeing how this is taking shape. Now, if I wanted to go into my KPI, and then I want to go to styling. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. I want to go to my KPI object and this is a data element and I can go to appearance and I can go to my color and I can go using library colors if I wanted to using me in other words from a master item or I can change the color directly from the palette here. And then I could do that for the each um, of these different elements if I wanted to. But just for argument's sake, just like a cake is now um, completed. Here is the completed example with individual styling. Now styling is going to take some time just to get right because you want to match the, the brand and the organization, but this is what the app now looks like completed. It's very uh, pleasing, the eyes, you know, the actual color scheme you picked Alberto was, you know, very good, I, you know, just depending on which branding or organizational, you know, labeling you yeah. want to match, but it's, it's actually easy on the eyes, kind of like a dark mode, if you will. Uh, but now I have all of these different options, right? So this little control panel now, utilizing the capabilities for sheet navigation. Very well done, Alberta. And this is completely done out of the box with click, um, yep. all the elements, no extensions or anything like that. And you can see, you can definitely create uh, an eye pleasing and effective uh, application and dashboard with this. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do now. Alberto, I'm gonna switch it over to you. You can, yep. I think you, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Uh, I'm gonna look at the Q and A address anybody's questions. So if I seem to appear distracted on the camera, I'm handling that and then you can run the show from here. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. All right. So, so let's let me share here. my screen. Oh, so. I want to get a health check while Alberto's doing this. How's the webinar running, guys? Is everything seems smooth and present, you know, pretty well it, to let me know in the Q&A. OK. OK, uh, so I have a couple of slides uh, to introduce a little bit the 
let's say the why uh, I embarked in such a such a project and then I'm gonna switch over to the tool and guide a little bit through the tool um, and also highlight a little bit what are the I would, I would call them like added values that my tool can can help you uh, to achieve so um, I would like to start from this uh, sentence uh, from, from a book that I read uh, some time ago. Uh, prior joining Click, I used to be a BI manager in, in, in companies, in, in our customer companies. And I, I know very well uh, the importance of design and visualization style. Uh, sometimes we do, uh, we do put the, the design and the way the look and feel uh, goes for a dashboard. We put it like in the corner of the discussion, uh, but in the real life, the adoption of a dashboard, or um, maybe it's a, a single dashboard or a set of dashboards, it doesn't matter. But the adoption is also affected by the overall look and feel and the design. Um, people, especially people like working in marketing, uh, people working in product teams, they really do like to use applications and so, I mean, reports that have um, the color of their brand, the color of the company, and that are also pleasing to the eye. Uh, the example that I sent to Mike um, is a dark themed uh, report, and I find it very uh, pleasant for the eye. It doesn't really uh, stand up from the screen, and you can also look at the report at night. It doesn't um, affect your uh, your view. I'm gonna I'm gonna create also a light version of the team uh, later. So this sentence is a little bit the the reason represents a little bit the reason why I decided to embark in such a project. And if we talk about history, everything started in 2018. I joined Click in 2017. When I joined Click, uh, custom themes were not available. And they became, became available in uh, February 2018 release of ClickSense. Um, so I had the idea of building something that could help um, end users or developers that are not coders uh, to build a custom team. Uh, I had to wait a couple of years uh, in order to be able to produce something. And in 2020, I decided to embark uh, on this project. And here I have to shout to Vincenzo Esposito and Giacomo Brioschi. They are two colleagues of mine and they have been extremely helpful. And I have to say also they, have, they are like one of the keys of the project. Um, this project would not have been possible without Giacomo and Vincenzo. So they, they supported me and they helped me uh, on, while building this, this tool. Uh, I decided to go for, a, as you will see uh, later, uh, for a very simple uh, Node.js application. It's a web application. It doesn't uh, have to be complicated. Uh, I remember in 2018, I was uh, thinking about uh, making a desktop application. Uh, we used to have a ClickSense desktop at the time that was very uh, diffused and very used. So I was thinking about building a desktop version of the team creator. But then already in 2020, we started to have Click Cloud, And so I wanted to have something uh, web-based. So the first release was in 2021. Uh, by the way, this first release was more intended to be an internal tool for us in Click, was not intended to be released to the public. Uh, the tool stayed then, I would say, under the shadow for some time. And then this year, I decided to give it a, a, a revamp, um, adding new features and so on. And then uh, uh, I got a sort of explosion on LinkedIn when uh, everyone started to repost uh, this, uh, the availability of the tool. And I decided to go uh, to develop it uh, even further. So this is a little bit the, the story of the team creator. Um, and yeah, as Mike said, um, we have a new home, uh, finally. Uh, maybe some of you out there already used it. Uh, it was uh, previously hosted. I mean, it's still hosted on Glitch. Uh, Glitch is a good platform, uh, it's free, and uh, the, only, the only thing is that I discovered uh, by chatting with some of you on LinkedIn that um, there are some issues with the DNS in some countries, Italy for example, some people in Italy cannot access Glitch for some reason, so I decided that if we were going like full blast, we, we needed to have a, a new home, so this is the new um, uh, URL. 
And this is also the updated version because on Glitch, I didn't update the, the, the team creator anymore. Uh, I will then share the, the link uh, either in the chat or Q&A, we're going to, to see where, and uh, Mike will also, will also share it uh, uh, in, the, in the resource library. Um, the other, so, I mean, before going to the tool, a couple of uh, like feature summary. Um, we have, so I decided to, Mike was mentioning the docs. So the docs were really uh, my guide when building the tool. Uh, I really built uh, the Thing Creator following the structure of a standard uh, custom team. So I have general theme properties, general object properties, uh, okay, some no code CSS, but we are gonna get back to this. Um, uh, the, the ability to upload your own CSS and uh, some common object properties, scales, palettes, and um, UI palettes, and then the live preview. So there are many features, I would say. Uh, there are still some things that are missing, and then I'm gonna uh, maybe come back to the to a little bit of roadmap uh, before uh, before closing. So, um, Mike, if you agree, I would move to the tool. We can have a quick look together, and then maybe we can pick up some questions and, and start uh, answering some of those, okay? Absolutely, and for those who are on, I've been feverishly answering questions through the uh, chat for those that were more personal. I'm gonna leave uh, also other ones we're gonna answer at the end um, or when applicable so everybody could hear the answer to that. Yeah, perfect. Okay, um, so here is how the, uh, the the tool looks like. Uh, as I said, it's a web-based tool. It's made in Node.js. Um, I have a top bar uh, where I have some credits in terms of service. Uh, as Mike said, it's a it's a community project. Uh, it's a yeah. personal project. Uh, I made it uh, uh, with love <laughs> and passion. And uh, of course, it's not, I would say, endorsed officially by Click. Yeah. And it's supported by me. Uh, as a best effort. So uh, I see that someone is uh, filing uh, some issues. So yeah, I will try to open up a case and click support saying, hey, <laughs> exactly. Like, exactly. What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. So please don't don't open tickets on on uh, on click support uh, site because they will never uh, support you. So um, by the way, there is a, a report uh, issue uh, page. It's a very, very simple um, uh, Microsoft form that you can that you can fill and I will get uh, the, the description and the issue. If, when you, whenever you, you insert the description, please try to be as specific as possible. I, I already saw that a couple of bugs were, were, um, were reported. So try to give me the steps to reproduce them because I have a lab, I have a development environment, but they, I need to be able to reproduce the bug. Let, otherwise I would never be able to, uh, to reproduce the issue. Um, I have a link to the official, uh, docs, uh, Mike, uh, already showed the page. By the way, the page changed. So be aware of that because I was stepping into this trap. Uh, the custom theme page used to be on help.click.com, but recently we moved it to click.dev. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So I had to update also the link uh, on the on the on the theme creator, and here you can really find um, many many things and everything you need to know about uh, custom themes. So. Uh, the page is divided in two columns. Uh, we have on the on the right we have the preview, and on the left we have all the theme properties. Um, uh, and then in the preview is, is is divided in three. We have the common objects. We have a scale preview and the palette preview. Uh, those will be enabled when at least one scale or one palette is available. Otherwise, they will not uh, work. This is not click sense. So be aware. This is not click sense. Uh, this is a render that we do uh, through a, a, a JS library. So we apply the colors and the fonts that you are selecting just to give you a sneak preview of how this could look. So if you choose a green uh, background for the visualization and you choose a red uh, font color, you can see that it probably will not look very well, but this is not click sense. Um, yeah, maybe then in the roadmap we can, we can talk about that. So here we have general preview. Uh, Mike showed you a screenshot of the structure of a theme. The theme, as a minimum, has to have a QX uh, file. It is a sort of um, metadata uh, description file. And um, there is a JSON. CSS is optional and images and fonts are optional. So this first uh, part, 
technically is called accordion. So this first uh, part is the QX. So here you, you insert the name. Uh, I can say like do more with, uh, uh, by the way, I support the space. So you can um, name your theme as you want. And then the zip file will be automatically converted to uh, dashes instead of spaces. But the name of the theme will have spaces. Uh, you saw the hell yeah, <laughs> my funny theme name. So I, I wrote hell yeah with the space, but then the zip file is hell dash yeah. Uh, you can put the description, a version, and the, and, uh, the author. Um, whatever is highlighted in red is uh, mandatory. So if you don't uh, complete this um, field, you will not be able to generate and download the theme because this is, um, this is uh, mandatory. So main theme properties. Uh, here we have very important properties. Uh, and I do think that one of the, probably one of the most important uh, options that you need to tackle and decide when you start building a theme is this one, style object as cards. So Mike showed you uh, the example that I sent to him uh, where basically I decided to style object as as cards. So let me uh, let me see if I can. Okay. Um, so this is the example that Mike was showing. As you can see, object when are rendered as cards, they are separated between them. Uh, this is a decision that is entirely up on the designer. You can have them as cards or not. It's not better or worse. It's a decision based on the design. Um, then you have some general properties like general font color. You can say, okay, I want a pink uh, color for all the fonts. And this will be applied cross to everything um, as well as font sites and visualization background. Um, so one small parenthesis here, as Mike said, in, especially in the cloud part, but more and more even in the client managed, we are bringing many, many options of styling options inside the out of the box tool. Um, so one of the questions would be, okay, why should I use the team creator to, for example, set the visualization background color? The point here is that if you need to do this kind of customization with the standard functionalities, you need to do it by app. With this tool, you create it once and then you can apply it to multiple applications by just selecting the theme as Mike showed. So this could be the reason why. And as Mike said, um, this is not, I mean, I'm the creator of this tool, but I don't feel it's uh, a, I would say production ready tool. It's still ongoing. Uh, it could have bugs, but it's an extremely useful tool to start your theme journey. So this theme that Mike showed you that I built uh, specifically for this application is st started with the team creator. So I did basically the 90% with team creator, and then I had to um, work on the CSS, for example, to make the filter panel transparent. Uh, this is an option and that can be done, uh, no code. And I will talk about this in the, in the, in the roadmap, but generally speaking, this is a great tool to get you started with the team the custom theme, you start with my tool and then you download the zip and then if you want, you go ahead. Um, here we have some general uh, properties. In general, I talk about font and, and default color. So these colors are the one used uh, when there is no, uh, I would say like no other option set. For example, the others color, uh, when you do like the limit, like top five products by sales, uh, if you enable the others, this is the color that will be uh, used. So these are important too. We have some option for the sheet title. These are pretty new. Uh, these are, uh, these have been recently released and here you can set the title color. So when I say title color, I mean this bar on top. Uh, you can have three level private approved and published, and uh, it can be the same color or that can be a, a gradient. So this could be useful. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to then come to this section. So yeah, this, this is, is my probably, favorite part. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so this is probably the real added value of this instrument. Um, I wanted to go, uh, I wanted to take the opportunity to give known coders um, to build something nice and to build something 
very nice. Sometimes you need to go for the CSS route. So I tried to translate uh, custom CSS stuff into no code stuff. Um, as I said, there is a disclaimer here and it's very important that you read the disclaimer. Uh, I'm, the, the options I'm gonna write in the CSS are on things that are not supported officially by Click. So I'm working on the CSS classes in the um, dashboards and that could change in the future. So for example, I could say, add a drop shadow to a car and then I'm gonna let you know what this is. But maybe, I don't know, in February 2024, <laughs> the class will change and this option will not work. I will try to do my best and stay behind the changes, but I cannot guarantee. So use these options, but be aware they could change. Uh, as I said, you can upload your manual CSS. So in case you upload your manual CSS, no options will be managed by my tool, but everything will be managed by you. Or you can use mine. So starting from the left, you can enable Google Fonts. So when you enable Google Fonts, you get this warning because if you use Google Cloud, you need to enable, um, uh, you need to create content security policies for these two uh, sites. Okay. Otherwise, due to the course uh, prevention, you will not be able to, to use Google Fonts. And uh, here is, there is an hyperlink that is bringing you to the help where Correct. we teach you how to build a Alberto, content security. Let me interrupt yeah. right there. Just so the content security policy is a option in the management console is very simple. Um, you go yeah. into the management console and you just basically add the directives that you want to be available. So for example, if you just want to get images from a external third-party source, you're going to use the image source directive from that domain. Good. I'm, you're bringing it up. Awesome. So it's yeah. important because I know there's people on here that might not understand what you meant by content security policy. It's just, very, sure. it's just basically yeah. saying the cloud environment will allow these directives to come in. And there's exactly. perfect right there. Awesome. So yeah. yeah, so it's nothing coding. It's nothing crazy. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's nothing, and, and also it's nothing that may harm the security of your environment. Mm -hmm, as, mm -hmm. as Mike said, it's just telling, I mean, it's even it's even better. It's telling our cloud that it's safe to go out there and bring things in. Correct. So it's the other way around. You're not making something unsecure, but you are, ma you are making sure that that channel is secure. Right. So it's really, it's really, it's really important. And it's a warning that you need to take into account because otherwise, if you deploy, um, if you deploy the, uh, the fonts, they will not work. So once you understand this, you will have a selector here and you can browse, uh, I would say the majority of the um, Google fonts. Uh, and you can even search. So if you search for Roboto, for example, Roboto actually, is one actually of my... do me a favor, search for, uh... I think it's called two player. It's like an, cause I like video games. It's a uh, to the number two. Is it in there? There it is. Yeah. Press yeah. start. Yeah. That's <laughs> the retro yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are some, there are some fonts uh, like Roboto that give you alternatives. Like you have the, the number of points and the, so the variance and the italic. So whenever, so let, let's choose the Mike favorite one. Uh, okay and you, you, you click on select and that is selected. So that would be added to the CSS and that would, uh, would be used in your dashboard. Mm -hmm. So then you have the ID click sense toolbar. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is gonna, uh, this is gonna hide the, the bar on top. To be honest, we recently released the same option here, show toolbar, um, but again, this option is, is useful anyway, because even if it's an out of the box functionality with a, with a theme, you can just uh, have it applied to many applications. Exactly. Same goes for the clicks and selection. So when I talk about clicks and selection, I mean this gray bar. Uh, once upon a time, we used to call it cookie bar. Um, and, and again, you can hide it or not. Again, same goes for the sheet title. I know this option is gonna come uh, soon, but again, you can uh, remove this option. Be aware that if you remove the ClickSense toolbar, you will not see the logo to go back to the hub. But on the other hand, if you remove those three, your dashboard will increase quite a lot the space yeah. 
And for example, if you are going to, to uh, show the, the dashboard, for example, on a TV screen or on a monitor, that's very convenient because you can really fill all the space. Um, so then we come to the app drop shadow. So um, in this case, I have objects displayed as a card, but there is no shadow. So there is no glowing light. Uh, but for example, there are cases, especially when you do, uh, I really like it when you do like a, a light team. So maybe here was not dark, but like a light gray. It's very nice to have a, a like maybe a very, very, very light gray, uh, light glow uh, or drop shadow around. And with this switch, you just select the color of the shadow and you get the code added to the CSS. Um, another, ah, so you have an help. So if you click on help, there is a there is a dialogue that helps you understand what there is in this option. So you always know what you're going to do. Uh, remove card border. So this is another nice thing. Mm -hmm. So when you, for example, when I was building uh, this uh, theme, I said, okay, style as card. But by default, every card has a white background. I don't think it's white. I think it's a very light gray, but anyway, let's say light, uh, we'll say white. So it's a white border uh, around the card. And if you use like a dark background, that doesn't really look good. So with this option, you can remove the border and get a look and feel like the one I get into this um, uh, report. Uh, this other one is a, is, a, is a CSS option that was shared, I think, by Patrick Nordstrom uh, some time ago, I think at a one click work. Uh, so basically, if you enable this option, you your the column header of your pivot table are going to be vertical. And then the last one is another nice one. Uh, as Mike showed, uh, you, you can have out of the box a picture showing as background, and I'm using it in this um, uh, application. But when you set a background image on a, on a, on a ClickSense sheet, you get a five pixel padding, so a five pixel border on every side of the picture. So you don't get this nice uh, look and feel of a, of a um, picture spanning uh, throughout the entire sheet. So if you want to remove that, you just click on this switch and you get the image as I'm showing it here. So full span on the screen. Uh, so these are no code CSS options. So here you are having a custom CSS made by my tool with no intervention from anyone knowing uh, CSS. Then we move, I'm not gonna go through every single option. Uh, there is a help for that. So here I have the major options mm -hmm. uh, for the general objects. Um, you will see, I don't have specific object properties. Uh, Mike showed you, for example, the KPI. So here you can say the K see the KPI. Um, you have a number of stores, it is the label, and then you have the, the measure. So there is a property in the custom theme to style those. I didn't uh, include that in the theme creator because otherwise I would have to do it for every single object and that would really require a lot of effort. So instead, as we have the standard um, styling option, as Mike showed you, you can just create general stuff. Like, for example, all this grid is styled through um, this axis. So I change it, the line of the axis here. And then for the specific KPI, um, if I'm not mistaken, when I loaded the theme the first time, the, um, the, the label was like black. Mm -hmm. And you just go into the standard option and you fix the label. If you want to have it in a theme, you can manually edit and, 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 and you're good to go. Uh, then we come to scales. So scales are the color by measure. So whenever you get into uh, a chart and you, for example, uh, say color by measure um, here, you don't say auto, you say by measure. Um, here you see the, um, uh, the default uh, palettes, let me say. So um, here uh, you can create as many scales as you want uh, by clicking the, the, the button here. You have to give a name to the scale. 
uh, so I can say like S1. Uh, keep in mind, you are not going. Uh, you are you are going to see the name on top. So this one is is helpful. Um, the type can be gradient or class. It depends, and the property value can be of different value. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, I really suggest you to go to the help. And then uh, whenever you want, you have a preview. Mm -hmm. So you see how this would more or less look on the final thing. You can remove it or you can add a new one as you prefer. Um, as this is a color by measure and this is normally a gradient, uh, you just have the start and end color. Now, Alberto, can you go back to the custom, yeah. I mean, go back to the ClickSense app and just show the palette yeah. actually exposed? Yeah. So let me go to another one. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I'm going to take this one. Yeah, because the line chart didn't have it. Yeah. And there it is. You, you see them. Yeah. So S1, S2, S3, S4 are uh, scales that I added to the theme. So as you can see, those are all gradients. And, and you can change them directly in ClickSense. Right, and you're uh, just giving though, you're, so the custom theme is actually giving the developer of the app the ability to even have more flexibility on choosing additional styling. So you're, not, you're building styling into the styling interface, so to speak. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, especially for palette. So for let's say, yeah, what, what you said is perfect because these three last menus are exactly what Mike said. So you are building stuff that maybe later on can be used by even someone else. And they can decide within whatever you created, what they want to use. Okay. Same goes for the data palette. So data palette is basically uh, the color by dimension. So when you say, I want a color by dimension, uh, you can have uh, these uh, color schemes, uh, P1, P2, P3 are the, the three ones that I created. And those are created. So let me go back to the to my original one. I don't want to screw up my <laughs> my my app. Um, you can have as many palettes as you want. Again, you can give a, a name, A1, for example. Uh, so there are, I think, two types of palette. Uh, one is row, and the other one is like pyramid. Uh, for the time being, I only support the row one. The pyramid is a little bit more complex, but I'm will try if I uh, can implement it and. Um, as it's not a scale, but a palette can have a lot of colors, you click on colors and then you can set the different colors. Mm -hmm. So you say, okay, mm -hmm. I want a five color palette and I'm going to go, for example, Mike, you shared a lot of nice resources and you, you probably go to one of those sites, you get a, a palette from a picture or from mm -hmm. a brand image and then you just click and copy paste because this is text. So I can just like do a copy paste and that works so you can just uh, pick the colors that you want okay the color picker is here uh, but probably is more used like the copy paste functionality rather than the the color picker right because actually um, it, it's better to do a copy paste from a from a side uh, same goes for the so here you can have as many as you want and then UI palette UI palette is the palette that is used in menus like this one so in, in every menu where you have this um, mm -hmm. picker, for example, you have it here, but you also have it like, uh, I think in the standard, uh, let me go presentation styling. Yeah, there you go. So yeah. even in the standard functionalities, um, this is called UI. You can have only one palette. So when you add one palette, the button is grayed out because you can have only one. Mm -hmm. So you can say Z1, and again, you can have as many colors as you want. Uh, I'm going to throw some very ugly, <laughs> ugly colors. And then you are. Um, same goes for the palette. As we said, we have a data palette, so you can preview uh, the different palettes and see how it, uh, it looks like. And goes here for the UI. I don't have the preview for the UI, but I mean, there is no, there is no, there is no need for that. Right. So once you're done with that, you just click a button and you get your theme downloaded uh, on your on your computer. And if we if we go in the in uh, in the um, in the in the in the zip file and we look whatever is in the folder, uh, we can see that we have the CSS, the JSON, and the QX. And if we open the the CSS file, there will be a bunch of stuff that 
has been added automatically by the team creator. So you you could write this stuff, but my tool did it for you and you don't have to know uh, the code. Jump starting your custom theme creation. That's the exactly. you know, message we want people to walk away with today. Yeah. So if I now go to my to my environment, uh, I can try even if it will look very, very bad because yeah. <laughs> I really do feel that the colors are really horrible, but let's do it anyway. It's just like one of those uh, cooking shows, you know, when they, <laughs> exactly. build them, they, they always take out the finished cake. Exactly, exactly. But in, the, in this case, everything is, is live and real. So yeah. I'm going I'm gonna to use a, another application though, because I don't want to screw up anything. So I have a custom theme application. Um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna set the theme as Mike as Mike did, uh, so here, and then yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do more with click, and yeah, as you can yeah, see, it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look that bad. I was thinking I was thinking a little bit worse uh, to be <laughs> honest. Yeah, we need to we need to check the the, the different uh, the different stuff like color by dimension and so on. But still, yeah, yeah I mean, beautiful. it's, it's not that. that bad. It's not that bad, but uh, the, the reason why you don't always uh, uh, see here the palette is because sometimes the library the colors by default is is um, is there. Mm -hmm. So you need mm -hmm. to you need to you need to in so order to see your schemas. Do me a favor, Alberto. Yeah. Go to your master items because we want to explain real quick. Now, guys, I have a ton of videos on the Do More with Click Tips and Tricks Edition series. I cover a number of different topics through there. When Alberto mentioned library colors. A master item, which is a governed piece of, I think of it as an expression or a field that can be used throughout the app. You can define that expression, define that measure, define that dimension, but you can also set formatting properties for that. Yes, And exactly. that's what Alberto is showing here. And this is what, if you ever see that library color switch, it's utilizing the master items formatting properties. And that's what Alberto is showing here, segment colors. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, you can have segments, you can have percentages or, or values, and same goes for the, for the dimension and not the measure. You can have uh, different values yep. for you different uh, colors for different values. Right, so, you can manually set the value and color exactly. association here, but what Alberta did is he created that within the palette. And then you yeah. can override these if you wanted to. And this is the and this is a UI palette that we Correct. created. So this is the one that we created here, the Z1 palette. There, there is no name, but it's, it's this palette. And here you can override the others and null values. Here is the place where you can override uh, the values that are by default uh, here. So here uh, are the, def the, the values that are here. So um, this is, uh, so, yeah. So we have about 10 minutes left. Um, yeah, we can pick so, up some questions and well, I can do the roadmap later if you want. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. So I want to address a number of questions. We still have a number of people on here, um, yep. which is great. Um, first, this has been great. I knew it would be. And, you know, working with you, Alberto, is awesome. The enthusiasm. This is the type of employees that click, you know, hires, you know, people that have contagious enthusiasm to help inspire you and, again, want you to learn how to do more with click. So absolutely great presentation. Um, even, I mean, my custom demos, I have a couple of customers that I'm actually doing presentations uh, for next week, and I'm actually using Theme Creator to help build out some of that brand and styling. Um, so what I'd like you to do is if you can quickly cover the roadmap, because this yeah. is awesome. Yeah, Alberto has a roadmap. I mean, come on. This is great because <laughs> he wants to continue to do more with uh, themes creator. So yeah. um, quickly show the roadmap and then um, I'm going to go through some of the, you know, some of those questions. So, so uh, the only, so I, I would have to put a legal disclaimer <laughs> as we do in Vic, <laughs> but I cannot do that. So uh, no, I, I, I don't have any, any specific point. I just want to share with you a little bit of my thoughts. Uh, as, as I said in the introduction, and as you said, it's a, it's a single, uh, it's a one-man show uh, i have colleagues helping me but i cannot uh, like force them to to, to help me. so um it's a one-man show i have some ideas in mind uh, the first the first ideas that i have in mind is um one that is bugging me for from a lot of time so you mentioned uh one very important uh thing mike mm -hmm. um the developer tools of um the browser so whenever whenever you get into an application, uh, it may happen that you need to make something uh, look different. For example, uh, the, the, the application I'm gonna show you, this is an application I did uh, to demo to a customer. And here we have these buttons in order to select the, the, the channel, the distribution channel. 
So these are standard battles. I'm, I, I, I really love using standard stuff because I want my customer to be able to do the same things that I do out of the box. So one question is, how do I make is some, some object background transparent. As of today, you need to go down the CSS route. There is no other way. Uh, for example, in the, in the application I sent you and the, and the one we showed on the, on the screen, uh, the filter panel was made transparent uh, in the CSS. So one of the ideas I have in mind for the, for the evolution of the Thing Creator, but I'm still thinking about it, is if you are able to provide me the idea of the object, I can write the code for you. So I can I can point you to a tutorial where you where we someone is going to teach you how to use the um, the, the the element picker of the button uh, where you can pick the button. I can tell you where to find the ID, and then for example in this case it's this one X M R Y P content. If you provide me this value, I can make it transparent or any other thing you want. But the colors are there. We just missed the transparent option. So I'm still thinking about this because um, uh, it's not very straightforward and I want to, to make it, I mean, integrated, but not so much integrated because it's something a little bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing I want to, uh, to, to add um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the tool is the ability uh, we used to have it uh, if, if Giacomo is connected uh, to the webinar he knows and he will be laughing uh, we used to have it in the first version the ability to directly upload and apply the theme from here on a click cloud application so in the first version of the tool uh, when it was internal only you had the ability there was a like a window here before the green button you had the ability to connect to your tenant with an API key, browse your application, select the application and apply the theme directly. So the tool would upload the zip file and apply the, the theme directly. Yep. Yep. Um, one of the items on the roadmap is maybe to bring it back. Uh, and the other point, but this is really the last one, and this is really trickier, uh, is to be able to read existing themes. So yep. as of today, the tool is one way only you create a theme, you download it, boom. I don't have anything that recalls uh, who you are, which kind of theme you did. I don't know anything about you. I only give you the zip file and that's it. So one of the things I would like to be able to offer is the ability to recall a, create, a previously created theme and edit it. And that would be, would be awesome. Okay. And one other thing, I don't know if we, I, you mentioned this or if I missed it, um, user profiles. I know that yeah. is something you'd like to do, but it's something that will take additional effort. So when you create this theme, you download it, that's your theme. So if you wanted to go back and you close the browser, it's not going to retain those settings. So it's not like yeah. we have a user login. And obviously you could imagine what type of effort that might be take, but the uploading of an existing theme to set those settings would avoid you having to do user profiles. First. Yeah, I need to, I need also, uh, it, it requires effort and also it requires yeah. resources because, uh, uh, I mean, storing all the themes and all the profile would need a database. So uh, I need to find the database mm -hmm. where I can save all this exactly. kind of stuff. And then people would have to register. So maybe not everyone is willing to, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna think about this. Um, but see, I'm well, smiling because you've done for me, uh, I think for me and everybody on this call above and beyond the, of what <laughs> people would expect. And, you know, think about it, right? This is not even in the product. This is something that, you know, you and your team and your members and Click Enthusiasts have developed. So who knows yeah. if they'll even incorporate it to the product or I don't know how that works. Don't even ask that question. Who knows? We know it's there for you to use and you yeah. have a great team of people behind it that's going to help support um, and make it easier to develop custom themes. So Alberto, what yeah. I'm gonna do now is just gonna go through some questions. Yeah, please. I'm gonna start from the top and then go down. If we have to screen share, uh, I do apologize in advance if I did not get to your question. I'm still learning the platform. There's gotta be a way also maybe to respond in an email if possible. So yeah. the first question was, um, if we covered it too, I'll just say we covered it already. Uh, want to check how to change the background color of the header in a normal table. Uh, yep. apply uh, able to do that on a bar chart and other charts so the background color of yep. the header and a normal table yeah so um 
so table is a big uh, big topic uh, as you may know uh, we we have uh, we have recently released the new straight table uh, as an extension uh, that straight table will slowly become uh, the standard object uh, i still don't know which kind of options they will give for the, the table as of the time being i think we can probably do it through css but you will probably need to i mean i need to dig to get to dig a little bit uh, in order to understand if there are standard classes or if they are uh, connected to the object. But that's a good point. I can check it uh, maybe to, to be added to the custom style properties. Yeah. Okay. Um, this question I can answer. I think it's uh, in regards to the variable uh, input object. Mm -hmm. uh, they saw that they can style a button in Click Cloud. I did actually release some presentation material this week on how we have the text is mm -hmm. scalable now to the size of the button um, and you can style the button, but what about the variable? And I'm thinking they're mentioning the input object. I understand that there are some efforts in place to improve a lot of those variable input objects as far as styling those that I do not know just yet, but I'm imagining more and more of these styling capabilities going to approach all of the different objects that are out there. Yeah, anyway, uh, just to, just to let's say, uh, say to our friend, uh, you, you can probably do something with CSS. So if you, if you use the developer tool, I don't mm -hmm. know the level of uh, technicality you can handle, but if you can do a little bit of coding, uh, if you can catch the, the, the class of the object, so you put the object like, I don't know, drop down. If you catch the class, you can, you can add the, um, a, a styling to the CSS. Keep in mind that could change over time, but still mm -hmm. maybe for the time being is more than enough. Uh, in regards to themes, this is some, actually something, and I'm, I'm going to apologize up front to all of you on here. I am a cloud guy now. That is my charter. I haven't touched client manage in a long time. A lot of what we put in cloud does come over to client manage, and there are things that don't. I'm just going to keep it at that. Um, in regards to themes, there isn't a themes section in the management console in client manage. It's basically an extension. Exactly. So it does work the same. You just have to upload the extension as the zip file to make exactly. the theme available. So yeah. uh, Chris, that's an answer to your question if you're still on the call. And if I can add on that uh, yes. for Chris, um, I don't think there is any big difference between the cloud and the client manage in terms of um, in terms of uh, styling as of today Correct. with themes. So the theme you create with the theme creator should work 100 on the client manager yeah and that's the next uh ah uh, yeah okay question uh, that from came telmo up. yeah okay from telmo so yeah so <laughs> i didn't read it there. But I already yeah. asked. Yeah, no that's okay. perfect that was good to good to bring up as well um okay. let's see change the background color of the header yeah it oh, was i think uh, we did that already. Yeah, i think it was the previous question yeah okay uh how to change the background color of the header again, yeah, again. okay answer live i love this interface this question interface is so much better yeah um is it possible to change style the style? of the oh, hub? This is a good question. So the style of the hub and the company logo. So I recently released a API only type of solution to change the fave icon and the hub logo, but that was only on what's called OEM tenants, our valued partner network that might set up a system for a customer. And they have a programmatic way to perform with, you know, platform operations, which is API driven. They could build their own tools. We have APIs that can change the fave icon and the logo, for example, but I don't believe that is across the boards for every tenant. I don't know why, I don't know if it will come eventually, but so the answer to your question is for OEM tenants, for customers, yes, you can change the logo. As far as the hub styling goes, that I haven't really seen. I don't know, Alberto, if you have any indication no, on hub as styling. Far, as, as far as I know, the hub is not uh, stylable yet, so no way. Okay. Uh, uh, I saw there is a question before, I think, uh, yeah. that was pretty interesting. Let me see, maybe it was dismissed by error. Mm -hmm. So it was from Federico. Ah, no, sorry. No, no, no. It was okay. Uh, so it was this one. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. My bad. Um, let's see. Look at that. So this is not really a question, but uh, Veronica, if you're still on, uh, I will mention that to our customer um, and a product management relations just to address that in regards to the colors. Do you see that question there? Alberto, yeah. Regarding the uh, yeah. Uh, I saw that yesterday. Uh, the the Actually, it was working on ClickSense. No, I think not yesterday. I think it was Tuesday. Uh, the arrow changed position. Uh, mm -hmm. Now they are not on top, but they are on the title bar. 
Uh, I don't know, Veronica, if they are uh, stylable. Uh, maybe with CSS. Uh, yeah. We need to, we need to check. Yeah. There could be a CSS injection capability, but then and then it'll be. Override itself once the page is reloaded, I think, or something like that. So I'm I don't not... know because uh, I think the, this this consideration goes a little bit with the with the question from uh, from Fashad. Mm -hmm. uh, he's asking basically if the style. It's a good question so far. Um, he, he's asking if uh, the styling option in Click override the custom theme. It does. Uh, a yes and no, because I tried it while we yes were doing the no. presentation. It depends on the object and element, like the data element. I can say color use it just to, from the color picker but i believe it shows the color pickers that are in the palettes that are in the theme. and the css it's also the css because if if for example you have a button and i inject with the css a transparent background the normal background will never work right yeah so the css so the json can be overwritten um the the, the css no okay uh, um, you covered this one is it possible to upload my own json theme json so json theme or CSS theme no, you can upload your CSS, but if you already have a, a JSON team, you can upload it to the, to the environment. Okay. Uh, let's see. When using background image to group objects, like the example which you do with your buttons, what oh, happens when the browser windows? Re okay, so that type of object, right? I didn't ask you about your pixel width, right? Because there's different scaling options that you can set for background images: fit to size, overstretch, yeah. you know, stretch to fit, always fit. Did you set a specific pixel width? Like so, in my width? case, uh, no. Uh, I used the. I think it was. I can tell you right away. I think it was the uh, stretch to fit. I think. Okay. And I I uh, only adapted the the, um, uh, the grid as a custom mm -hmm. uh, because I need because I wanted the grid so I can share my screen again. I don't know okay. if these guys are still uh, on. No, but it's fine because we're going to respond in kind to everyone who joined with a, a email that's going to have all the resources oh, okay it. sounds good yeah so uh if i'm gonna share my page here uh doo -doo -doo. so the the image uh is uh, stretched to fit and yeah. i had to do a 31 spacing because i wanted the grid to be exactly on the the border of this bar so you need to play a little bit with the grid spacing and the styling. Uh, if you reset uh, like the screen size, well, this is not actually, yeah, on top of the theme. This is more like a behavior uh, of click sense. Uh, yeah, but as you can see, it looks good. I mean, yeah. it, it keeps the, the proportion and it keeps the bar as a sidebar. So I would say it works pretty well. And we're, you know, introducing newer options. I don't have a date on this. I don't have confirmation on this, but there are going to be more um, flexibility in positioning elements yep. on the dashboard of, uh, yep. eventually. You're right. Yeah. Um, okay. So answer that one. Um, somebody wanted to show us uh, how to change the background color for the header normal table only the header. Did we talk about that already? Uh, uh, I background think so, color yeah. for the header and the, we kind of addressed that already. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, any plans for conditional show objects? So that is possible um, in the product out of the box with the, the show if expression. Actually, let me um, share my screen. And we got to switch. So we just added this capability. So the question to you, Alberto, is that are you planning on adding any of the, you know, I don't know if that's even possible if it's done through, the, you know, the CSS elements themselves. But you'll notice that, for example, in a bar chart, we actually have now a box show dimension if, right? So you can put in whatever expression is and it'll automatically change your elements. And you can do that for measures and dimensions in a bar chart currently. That that was one of the new things they just added here. And the yeah. same thing happens here, show measure if, and you basically just put your expression that equals to zero or one, and you can change that. I don't know if that is something necessary to have in a theme. No, um, so this is not this is not uh, on the theme, but uh, I think that the question from Telmo is also regarding pop-up, for example, for filter, filter panels. Right. Um, so, uh, no, uh, the, the answer is no. So mm -hmm. uh, you cannot, um, I mean, 
Probably yes. So the, <laughs> the yes. answer is probably yes, yes or no. <laughs> uh, the point is that um, if I put an object like the one that Mike is, is uh, highlighting now, so a, a filter uh, a filter panel, I can make it invisible in CSS. Uh, I'm not sure I can make it visible conditionally. And on top of that, it will anyway occupy some space in the grid. Mm -hmm. So what we are missing today in click, but as Mike said, probably something is going to come uh, for this. We are missing the ability to add an object on top of the page that can be hidden or showed. Right. Okay. And something similar will come, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but you cannot do anything as of today with themes. I, you can do it with an extension. Yeah. That that could work, but it's an extension. It's not a theme. Okay. Um, grouping sheets under a menu. So I don't know if because right now we have container objects that can group objects in a container, but I don't know of anything about grouping sheets under a menu. I'd have to we'd have to explore that a little bit more, Tomo. Good question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Changing sheets manually. This is actually be pretty cool. Uh, I wonder if you can do this with the API. Uh, changing the themes through the use of app automations. Uh, uh, if Giacomo is on the call, <laughs> he knows. Hmm. Um, so uh, the API to apply a theme is in Enigma, I think. So there is a function in Enigma JS that enables you to. Uh, so it's not an API. My bad. It's a function. It's not an API. So there is no way to call an API to change a theme as far as I know. Uh, if uh, if uh, this becomes available, I will be the first one to use it, <laughs> mm -hmm. for sure. So what we did with Giacomo in the first version, uh, where, where you could apply automatically from the theme creator, the theme on top of your app, was by having an Enigma.js uh, script that was calling the specific application and was invoking a specific function, but it's not an API. Okay, so it, yeah. we're past 11 and there's still a ton of people on here, which is awesome. Thank you guys. <laughs> so just for you, please join us on the next Do More With Click. I'm gonna see if there's a way to answer all these questions and get the answers out to everybody. Um, I appreciate everybody's time. Alberto, thank you so much for being here with me with this. Hopefully you My can honor. join me again uh, on something that you'd like My to present. Honor. And this is for those also, anybody who's out here, do more with Click is not just for Click. It's for partners, it's for networks, it's uh, network partners, uh, oh, anybody who wants to do things. Like I mentioned, I had Barry on from Bitmetric uh, last week. So if you're an SA at Click, uh, or if you are a partner or even a customer that can you know legally show something that you want to share with the community, let me know, reach out to me. Uh, before we hang up in the chat, a very important, the, the link for the yeah uh, I, I, How yeah I was trying to I was trying to um, let's see if I can put it in the answer and that can be public yeah that's so what you can I yeah, can put type it in the, the answer, answer. Mm -hmm. okay so I answered um, I answered the the question uh, from Kiran yes and the link is there and then so, you said to all right so everybody I I, I didn't send it pri privately so it should be public yeah okay. Um, yeah. Anybody who's still on the call, I mean, there's still a number of participants here. If you just want to confirm that you got that link. Yeah, maybe just put it in the Q&A that everything is working and it works. Okay, good. Um, the, the couple other things that are just we're learning with Zoom webinars, in the ON24 platform, there was a resource list where you can click links and it would link out to the topics of the day that we presented. I We are still exploring that. So bear with us as far as the resource material that we discussed and I'm going to try to find the best way to get you everything. Obviously, I have all your email addresses from the registration. I could even run an application automation job to burst everything to you directly if I wanted to. But there, there's got to be something in the marketing platform that we use that connects to Zoom webinars that I could get all this out to you. All right. Okay, um, so the link is working, apparently. Good. We you, got you confirmation. Awesome. Yeah. All right. And this is what you can come to expect on the uh, one of the next do more with clicks in any future session. The next one I'm going to be talking about, I might have the product manager on, Emil Koslowski, who was with me a number of times. If not, I don't 
think he might be available and we're going to cover right back solutions and i'll have a great demo planned for that as well and that is on july 19th and uh, look for the pop-ups that happen in the ClickSense platform and through the community and social media so you can learn how to join how you can do more with click other than that, Alberto, thank you so much. And Alberto, obviously, when I end the webinar, stay on. Don't hang up. <laughs> I can't connect to you. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> and guys, thank you so much. Thank you for so being much. A part of this as well. And uh, couldn't do this without you because your questions and answers help us improve the series as well. All right, guys, I will see you on the next Do More with Click. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.